Christianity had been in the country for hundreds of years. And until the ruling family came to power, Christianity was practiced openly and freely. Christian churches began to be formed throughout the country. And more than a hundred years ago, the Bible was translated into the common language and it was printed and distributed throughout the cities and villages of the country. But when the ruling family came to power, they purged the country of all religious vestiges and institutions. Christian churches were looted and burned. Christian pastors and church leaders were immediately executed in public. And Christian followers were, were threatened with the same unless they disavowed their faith in Jesus Christ. Those who did not deny Christ were whisked away to prison labor camps. And those who did deny Christ were surveilled very closely. Authorities scoured the country for Bibles, and finding them, they confiscated them and burned them in public, securing their authoritarian control. And every Bible in the country was confiscated and burned. Almost immediately thereafter, a rumor began to spread among the few remaining Christians in the country that, that one Bible was spared from the flames. It wasn't a fancy book with ornate illustrations and calligraphed text. It didn't even have study notes or editorial comments. It was just God's Word bound in a leather cover written in the language of the country. And this rumor grew into a legend that the country's lone Bible was kept under lock and key in a secret room of the official state library in the capital. And rumor had it that someone had broken into that room and stole that legendary Bible. Officials searched Silver's home, apparently looking for that Bible. They kept asking, where is the Bible? And Silver consistently responded, I don't have any Bibles. One officer backed Silver up to a wall and demanded of him, are you a Christian? But before Silver could respond, they forcefully escorted him out of his house, slammed him up against his own car, and forced open its trunk. In Silver's trunk, they found stacks of colored construction paper, a few cartons of similarly colored ping pong balls, and one old, worn, leather-bound book. Burned into the cover of that leather-bound book were two words. Holy Bible. <coughs>
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life.
Father God, this very moment, enter in with your spirit into the hearts and souls and minds of everybody here such that we can be enriched with your presence and be filled to overflowing with your love and your goodness. And to take this time and learn and to be in oneness with you. We thank you, Father, that we have this, this place, this time, this, this that is all around us that you have given us, that we can use it to worship. We come to you, Lord, with an open heart, seeking, asking, as grafted in children, that you would teach us, hold us dear, and grant us direction. We thank you also that we have the presence around us such that we have discernment, we have a measure of wisdom, that we know that you are here, we know that you are Lord of all, and just like we say, it cannot, it cannot fail. So to you, Lord, we cling, to, to you we look up, because you are our master, our Jesus. I can only Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea 
In the days of Nebrot the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Nebrot the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not the least among the rulers of Judea. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Henrod when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Amen. Amen. When God became flesh and dwelt among us, when Emmanuel a Hebrew word meaning God with us. When Emmanuel was born, when the presence of God, yay, the very person of God, began to dwell among men, when that happened, God gave a signal to some ancient Eastern astronomers, the Magi. We call them the wise men. And that one signal was one star. We read for, we had read for us there in Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 and 2, when he was born in Bethlehem, behold there came wise men from the east saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star. And we take we take that question of old and ask it of ourselves some 2,000 years later, where is he that is born king? And if you would, let us transport ourselves, at least in mind, back to a place and to a time 2,000 years in the past and see the answer to the question, where is he that is born king? First, we will find ourselves accompanied with shepherds who have ventured to a cave, a cave that had been made into a stable where they found this king humbled in a cradle. It is as the angel had said, they found the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes Lying in a manger. You know, despite popular portrayal and our own perception of this initial Christmas scene, this was not a pastoral scene. It wasn't beautiful. It wasn't romantic. It wasn't cute. It was pathetic. It was sad. It was humiliating that a mother would give birth to her child in a barn and would lay that child in the only bed available, a stall which had only moments earlier been used for feeding livestock. This isn't cute. This is humiliating. How fitting it is, though, that the God of the universe,
universe, the creator of heaven and earth and everything that is, that is, how fitting it is that such a one be born in such a humble place and under such humble circumstances. That is fitting because for any one of us, for all of humankind, the rebirth of salvation, the new birth that gives eternal life is born in only the humble heart. Salvation cannot be born in the proud heart because God resists the proud. Salvation can only be born in the heart that is humbled before God. In a cave, a lowly stable, Christ our Lord was born. From the heavens, white-robed angels sang that holy morn. Shepherds heard the heavenly chorus and were sore afraid, but an angel spoke the tidings that all fears allayed. Born to you in David's city is your Lord and King. So an angel to the shepherds hope and joy did bring. Leaving resting flocks behind them, sought they for the stall, where there lay in swaddling garments Christ, the hope of all. Let us, like those lonely shepherds, seek the Lord this day, that we may, by lives of service, Show to all the way. Where is he that is born king? The shepherds and the wise men found him in Bethlehem, humbled in a cradle. We, though, must leave Bethlehem for this king, this who is Emmanuel, this one who is God with us, would not stay in Bethlehem for very long. But as we depart from Bethlehem, a darkened road takes us up the crest of a hill, and we might just look back for one lamp's last glimpse on that little town, yet lightened by the bright star. And our hearts flicker with joy for the brighter and holier light contained within her streets. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes, the fears of all the years are met in thee, O Bethlehem, are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary, and gathered all above, while mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars, together proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King and peace to men on earth. O oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O oh, come to us. Abide with us. Our Lord. Emmanuel. So as we journey from that peaceful, quiet town to the bustling city of Jerusalem, we travel in an eerie shadow. For from the star that shines so brightly over Bethlehem is drawn the ominous shadow of a cross. And the next time the question is asked, where is he that is born king? He is found hanging on a cross. 
if we could get close enough, we can see above his head the inscription written in three languages, Greek and Latin and Hebrew, an inscription written above his head, this is the king. That, that moment, our memories race back three decades to Bethlehem, and we ask, who is he in yonder stall at whose feet the shepherds fall? Who is he in deep distress fasting in the wilderness? Who is he the people bless for his words of gentleness? Who is he to whom they bring all their sick and suffering? Who is he that stands and weeps at the grave where Lazarus sleeps? Who is he that who is he the gathering throng greets with loud and triumphant song? Lo, at midnight, who is he that prays in dark Gethsemane? And who is he on yonder tree that dies in grief and agony? Who is he who from the grave comes to heal and help and save? Who is he who from his throne rules through all the world alone? Tis the Lord, a wondrous story. Tis the, the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet we humbly fall. Crown him, crown him, Lord of all. We leave Jerusalem now, and yet the question still remains. Where is he that is born king? We cannot go to Bethlehem now and find him humbled in a cradle. We cannot journey to Jerusalem now and see him hanging on the cross, for he has risen from the dead. He has ascended to the right hand of God the Father, and there he is seated upon a throne, and now we find him honored. With a crown. You know, when he was born, he was found humbled in a cradle. A cradle that was not his. The manger in which he slept belonged to the keeper of the inn. When he died, he was found hanging upon a cross. That was not his. He was crucified on our cross. God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He bore our sins in his own body on Calvary's tree. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. With his stripes, we are healed. He was humbled in a cradle that was not his. He was hanged on a cross that was not his. But let there be no misunderstanding at all. He is honored with a crown that is his. And only his. Where is he that is born king? He is seated at the right hand of God the Father, honored with a crown. Yes, my brothers and sisters, let earth receive her king. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. 
let heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let all their tongues employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow. No more let thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow as far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and the wonders of his love. Who is this king? Who is this one called Emmanuel? Who is, what is the name of this one whose title means God with us? The angel said to Joseph, Thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom.
Amen. Amen.